Hello there, James here. Well, how you guys doing? I had a pretty good day myself. Yeah, I'll get some air and vote on a, a certain topic on the issue today in Ohio. Well, but today, this is going to be something different on this video. You know, I make, I, I, I don't like to sometimes go there about race, but I always have a solution. If, for people who are racist against people, particularly black people. Why do you do some of the stuff you do? I just don't understand it. Is it worth losing your job? Is it worth getting banned off of social media? Is it worth falling out with people and, and backlash, threats coming at you? Why do you do things like this? I'm about to show you a video, ladies and gentlemen. And um, it's crazy. Here this woman showing in blackface. Here's the video.
individual literally decided to post on the social media that they are banned, which means what? Which means they went to the facility to take the picture, more than likely. And then the alleged attack in the parking lot, the aggression inside of the store, the harassment, potential harassment of a neighbor or coworker, and these are things we know just because of one post. I'm sure there's more. Do you think no one would have knocked on the door by now if this person was a person of color authentically? I know people can get outraged by the blackface. The blackface obviously is racist. Her commentary is racist. But this individual is dangerous. A threat, a legitimate threat based on the narrative of virtually everybody who has had contact with her according to this story. It's a tale of, well, two Americans. All right. That's my thoughts. Yeah, well, I'm glad to see that she's off these streets for now. Um, her daughter had to make a Facebook post condoning her mother's behavior. And I can't imagine what that must have been like for her to have to see your mother acting that way publicly and now it's on the Internet. And then to see your mother engaging with people in that matter, to see your mother yelling racial slurs at people. I don't know what their relationship is like. I don't know if she knew how unhinged her mother was prior to seeing this footage, but her mother was obviously a Trump supporter. We know that from the bumper sticker on her car. But what's sad about all of this, beyond the ignorance and the hate and the effort that she made to go out of her way to be disruptive and hateful, is that her mental state has been destroyed by Trumpism. I mean, if she was literally in a mental facility right now, maybe she already had mental issues prior to Trumpism. As he said, we can't really speak to that. We don't know. But what we see with a lot of these Trump supporters and QAnoners is that they succumb to fear and paranoia. And they've convinced themselves somehow that they are the victims of society. That's evident with this woman when she literally said that she's wearing blackface because she thinks it'll help her get a job later, which is it's crazy to most people to think about. The delusion is destructive and it's devastating. And I can only hope that there's a path back to normalcy, not just for her, but for a lot of people like her. Very well said. Just shoot. Pumping three yards in a cloud of dust from the hard corners of the really state on the ultimate homer, and that's my <clears> edge. <throat> they say never bet with me, but victory tastes that much sweeter. Hey everyone, it's your girl Emma. Thanks so much for tuning into the African Diaspora News Channel. We have another Karen. Karen on the bus. Karen on the bus who decided to go in on a black man who was minding his own business, just trying to get to his destination. And she just started with the racial slurs and fabrications. I'm gonna roll the clip and then we'll talk about it. I don't care what's going to affect on the internet, He's but I just experienced skin. my first He's one in black person. Skin. I have a black man hammering a white woman. He's been stalking me. I have a restraining order of Justin Samuels. This is his cousin. Yes. Samuel? You're going away. If your mom bothers you, you tell her to call me. If you want your father, you live in Africa. Now, I have a black man. He kicked me four times. I'm not going to be a black
So Karen went wild on the bus, fabricating things. I mean, the things that were coming out of her mouth, the untruths. Uh, she does seem a little off, but I always say that mental illness, if that's what in fact she suffers from, is not a symptom of racism. So she doesn't get a free pass for her behavior. I do like that a lot of people on the bus were calling her out and saying, you know, why are you troubling this man because he's black? Some people I, we heard saying, you know, shut up. Um, and then ultimately she got kicked off the bus. Uh, what I would have liked is for more repercussions than just being kicked off the bus because she was falsely accusing this man of doing things he was not even doing. That's the first thing. So that's defamation of character. She also called out his first and last name. That's a privacy breach. Um, and again, all of these things that she was making up and talking about a black man with a black face and just inappropriate, racist, white supremacist Karen on the bus. And there should be more repercussions than getting kicked off because she's just going to go and do the same thing again. Because once again, no repercussions, freedom to act the way you want, be caucasity, that's what it is about. And um, it's unfortunate that there wasn't more punishment coming down on this woman. Let me know what you think. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget. decided to stop and make Cracker Barrel. And I guess his brother didn't get the memo about Cracker Barrel. I, I, I don't know, but I guess I'll give the memo in this video. But let me go ahead and roll the clip to what this brother went through. Walked in, stop letting these companies play with y'all. I walked in here to place the order because I drive that truck, right? I wanted to leave. I walk in, the first thing the lady says is, who are you looking for? I said, I'm not looking for anybody. I'm going to place an order. She says, oh, okay. So then she says, I'll get someone to come up. So the lady comes up and she's like, what do you want? I turned around and walked out. I didn't like the attitude. I didn't like the vibes. Yeah, I'm not going to trust out with my food or nothing. I'll be going to starve before I just let you talk to me. Like I'm not a paying customer. Let me tell y'all something. I've been in that place Cracker Barrel before. I mean, the first time I went in there, Man, I feel like I stepped back into Jim Crow. Seriously. All them people got that old Jim Crow vibe about them in there. And I'm like, ooh, I ain't comfortable with this place. And I went there one one time. Uh, and I'm like, nope, I'm good. I don't want to be in nobody's Cracker Barrel. They can have it, right? But black people don't belong in Cracker Barrel. Well, what are you doing? I mean, they got plenty of places out there you can eat. I'm just letting you know, brother. You must not have heard all the racist stories out of Cracker Barrel. That's not a place for black folk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it, it's pretty bad. Do you know they even have code words for black people? When they come through the restaurant and they pass on to their staff in the, in the kitchen? Oh, yes. They say, on a, they, they say raccoon on the radio. Not to say the other word. Well, when black folks come in. So why do we need to be in a place like that as a straight-up Jim Crow spot? Man, you can go find you a local diner, which a lot of times those are the best. A local diner, the food not too expensive, and enjoy yourself. Is that Cracker Barrel? Nope, don't go in there. I mean, unless you want to deal with some racism, because you know when they when the others say what you want, like what you want, yeah, it makes somebody want to cuss you out for talking to them like that. But yeah, do not black people, do not, do not, do not go to Cracker Barrel. You go there, you go there at your own risk, because that place is straight up white supremacy. They also sisters from America. To wow. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I've been to Cracker Barrel and uh, yeah, I had, you know, some people go ignore me when I go to take the order. I really ain't too keen on their food anymore anyway. The only reason why I went 
was because my mother get, got me one of the gift cards. But that was the last time I've been to Cracker Barrel. And really, the food ain't really that good, personally. You know, because I had some turkey or something. It just, <laughs> it, didn't have no, it, it didn't have no taste to it. But, uh, yeah, you know, this stuff is getting out of whack. And I just don't understand why. I, I, why people just, if you, you know, it's so easy to go to a place in a part of the world. If you don't like black people, there's plenty of little towns where there's hardly no black people at, and you, and you constantly being racist. I mean, I don't understand that shit. I mean, seriously, I just uh, don't understand. You know, I just try to figure that out. I just like, damn, you know, just get away from from, from black folks. If you, if you feel that way. And, it, and and there's been some more crazy things that stuff like this. Like this one TikToker, what she said. You don't have to love racing to love Gran Turismo. Can. Because what you're really channel. watching is this feel-good sports movie. Yeah. It's I, I, you know, I, but I just don't want to go there. This woman, she can, she is not a black person. She, she can, we cannot call her Allah. Check what this lady said. And she actually came out to make her, I think she was on her live stream. There, she said that, uh, that there are, there are more people in slavery today than, that have ever been when it was legal, right? There are more people in slavery today than there had been even when slavery was legal. I don't know where she got her statistics from. She started by saying that sex trafficking and the rest of it, I don't know where this woman got her statistic from because I know Google is your friend. You can always make research to find out and all that. But it is always them wanting to defend slavery for no reason. And wanting to tell black people how to feel, how to react and how they are supposed to feel. Trying to tell them that, man, slavery back then was just a minor thing. It was just not something really tangible. It was not something really horrible. It was not something bad. Because right now, there are more people in slavery, tra trafficking, and the rest. I am just worried this people come back to talk about it. Let me know where you are thinking about So straight up, there we go. And to this day, we are still there. And what is said in that, and I quote, there is more people in slavery today than there has ever been even when it was legal. I'm going to say that again for those that didn't catch that. There are more people in slavery today than there has ever been even when slavery was legal. And majority of them are children. Human trafficking, sex trafficking, I'm going to say this one more time. There are more people in slavery today than there has ever been, ever, even when slavery was legal. Majority of them being children. So please go watch Sound of Freedom. You know, I'm a big proponent of two things can be true at the same time. Your stats and or your message could be absolutely true and valid while you simultaneously are full of fucking shit. <laughs> you sat here and went balls to the fucking wall about a goddamn song that you did no research on before you made your fuck ass videos.
But now that you done seen a movie, Google is your best motherfucking friend. And I don't know about y'all, but human trafficking, child trafficking, sex trafficking, all atrocious acts and need to be remedied. But the way that your ass sat here and made it very clear that you were trying to downplay fucking chattel slavery is fucking disgusting. Especially since you tokenize your black family and friends every chance you fucking get. I mean, with you being part of the black community, as you say, and all. Now, I can make a whole video about all of the wildly obtuse things you have said, done, you know, behaviors that you've exhibited. But in all reality, it doesn't matter how many times we call you and or people like you out. Because y'all not gonna change. Instead, your racially insensitive behavior, bigoted actions, and willfully ignorant remarks are so deeply embedded in your foundation of white supremacy that as long as some of us entertain you, you will keep doing it. So I don't know, maybe you need to host a live where you demand people to educate you on shit you can read yourself. Or you could just shut the fuck up expeditiously. But feel free to do at this video too. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when you queuing on, you queuing on. What exactly are well fed ass white people like you gonna do about it? Some of y'all can't have the discussion about chattel slavery in this country. Y'all get the black hides from somebody even bringing up the legal slavery in this country. I know goddamn well y'all ain't got the balls to deal with worldwide slavery. And you want to know the biggest indication that I'm right? Is that everybody in this whole fucking equation can get these fingers pointed at. The trans community. The drag performers reading school books. People who don't want to go see the song of the sound of freedom. Motherfuckers that don't like Jim Caviezel. Motherfuckers that don't like the motherfucker that Jim Caviezel's playing in the film. Motherfuckers that don't like the motherfucker who funded that song of the sound of freedom. You know who ain't getting that goddamn work? The rich men that are participating in it. If I don't sit perfectly still and listen as you tell me about the human trafficking being worse than chattel slavery in America, I'm a child groomer. That person over there is a child groomer. That person over there is a child groomer. You know who you're not calling a child groomer? The motherfuckers that poured in, and this is y'all numbers, not mine, $1.8 billion in the human trafficking. We can't get a name. We can't get an address. We can't get a business. We can't get shit. Everybody else can get to work at a point of the fingers and a blah, blah, blah. None of you have named a single fucking name. None of you. Y'all have made it your fucking cottage industry to attack and demonize the trans community and the gay drag performers who take the time out of their own busy schedule to read books to children, to call them groomers. But y'all said it yourself. It's a one point billion dollar a year industry and not one of you motherfuckers have brought up a single name not one that's how I know it's all bullshit until y'all can bring me a list of the rich millionaire men that are either selling or participating every single one of you motherfuckers are actors y'all are fucking cosplaying people saving children get the fuck out of my face Fuck out of here. It doesn't matter how many times we call you and or people like you out. Because y'all not going to change. Because it's way too lucrative. That's why. It, it's too lucrative. You grew this kingdom. Keep it healthy and thriving. It's too lucrative. Nobody's gonna stop doing what's lucrative. Uh, as long as sex sales on a popularity level, there will be sex trafficking. As long as racism sales on a popularity level, we'll have her. 
just is what it is. There is more people in slavery today. Okay, first of all, it's there are more people, Brittany. And then, of course, the fucking population of China alone is larger than what the world population was back then. Like, you, you, you are like stating facts trying to act like it's some kind of fucking phenomenal statistic that makes a great argument. No, it's just literally fucking numbers. But you ain't talking per capita. We're like, 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 you're not a statistician. Quit trying to do this shit. It's crazy. It's fucking crazy. Anyway, I love y'all. Stay blessed. Everybody is entitled to their own opinions. Everybody has a different perspective. Of the problem with this video is she thinks she's eating. Bro, like everybody has to tell their own opinion. Everybody has their own perception. But racism is racism. You can't tell black people that they're wrong on how they feel, especially when it's this big of a topic. I think people forget that when the Klan came out doing things and they were burnt, put across the burning yards, there was white folks who were like, "Well, like I don't see them as a hate group. They're just speaking their opinion." And that was their perception. For the last time, you cannot change this angle of how you cut the cake when it comes to racism. Especially if you're not a person of color. You did a video, so I live in a small town, weeks after the controversy. You did it, knew what you was doing. You weren't being like, oh, well, I just love small towns and I really understand small town. No, you knew the controversy. You knew it was a hot topic. You knew it was a hot video. And then people start putting two and two. I, I, I don't know this girl, y'all. I don't really, I don't watch her content. I don't know her from a can of paint. I just know I've seen her before, and she has a biracial daughter. And she did the Chris Brown and uh, Lil Dicky song, Freaky Friday. That part where Lil Dicky uh, is um, in Chris Brown's body, and he says, Can I really say the N word? Yo, I'm going to really say the N word. What up, my? And every time the N word came up, her daughter came up to say the word. Like, you used your biracial daughter as a pawn. For a TikTok. And the problem is you already have a set fan base and they like you because you promote a lot of sense like seductive videos. And you got all these niggas who think they have an actual chance with you through TikTok. So they're not gonna call you out on your BS. But I always thought Shorty was weird when she used her daughter to say the N word for a skit video. Like, ain't you supposed to lead by example, bro? Like, I just that's wild to me. Very, very wild to me. And then you try to play this angle, like, well, everyone's perception is different. We all don't see the same. And that's the problem. Like, you're using it as your solution, but it's really the problem. When people of color are telling y'all, non melanin folks, that this is racist, you should listen. Instead, you're trying to turn the cake, like, oh, well, from this angle, it don't look that bad, bro. But, why right? You just changed it so it benefited you. For the last time, if you are not a person of color, you have no right to tell a person of color that what they heard was not racist. I don't understand. I'm a man. I identify as he, him. So, like, if a woman was going through uh, menstrual cramping or a pregnancy or a hormones, etc., I'd never have the right to tell her how she should feel because I wouldn't know what it's like. Mm. Oh, you're, you're cramping? Have you ever thought about just getting over it? Like, that would be so ignorant of me because I wouldn't know what they're going through. Right. That's why that whole abortion thing is weird for me. Like, bro, we have no right to tell anybody what they what, what they can do with their bodies. Right? I just... Just dumb. Just dumb. And that is the issue. People have not, that are not numb that are trying to tell black folks that they're stupid. You guys are dumb. You guys all want to play victim. How is me feeling offended playing a victim? Like, you're doing... You're trying to do what, you, what your grandparents did. Back then... When your grandparents were born in like the 30s and 40s, they would tell black folks, hey, shut up, monkey. And that was it. And they and they couldn't tell a police officer because most of them were white. And most of the officers were friends with other white people in the town. So they would just tell them, oh, you think everything's about you. Ooh, you have the same mentality and you dead ass do not see it. I did. Oh my God. Never in my life. I would never respect somebody that uses their biracial kid as a pawn for anything, or use the kids in general. But you use your biracial kid so you could use the, the uh, what up, my nigga? What up, my nigga? What up, my nigga? Big ups, my nigga. You did that for a TikTok video. Okay? 
I don't even I don't, I don't care bro I just I didn't know about that that whole well not everyone sees the things the same we know and every time we don't people use like their amendments to why they feel the way they feel well I don't see it like you this is my freedom of speech to say this that and the third that's against you and this that and the third like bro y'all did, did your parents not teach you how to compromise and work with others did your non minded parents tell you that this is your world and so you don't have to abide or help or compromise or be compassionate? Is that what happened? Hey, I feel like that song, Travis in a Small Town, has racial undertones. There's a bunch of dog whistles. And all you had to do was be like, okay, cool. When I listen to the song, I don't hear that. Can you tell me why you felt like that? Well, I feel like that because of the video. He's doing this, that, chicken fat. Okay, well, when I saw the video, I just kind of saw that for this sector, and now we're talking. No need for no name calling, no need for no bashing. Now it's an open dialogue. I'm going to tell you why I feel how I feel, and you're going to tell me how you feel how you feel, and we're going to get to the middle of this, and then we're going to try to meet. Instead, what happened was, this song's racist, it's full of dog whistles. No, it's not. It's the truth. Try it in a small town, and wait. Try wait. And what are you going to do, kill me? This, that's what makes us a great country. That's what your MAGA for? Is you gonna kill me if I try what this small town? I don't. Bro, don't even get me started on that. Yes. That that whole thing is dumb. That I just that excuse really bad for me. Oh well, we have different perceptions, and some people try to see the good in everybody, while others try to see the negative and everything. But your video, try that in a small town. You were trying to stir up controversy on purpose. You weren't doing a video hoping that folks had a good in you. You were doing it as in, yeah, I know it make people upset. That was you trying to get the negativity out of other people. Like, bro, maybe because I don't find, like, maybe because I'm not sent before you like that, I can see through your dialect and BS. You know what I mean? Like, when people like people, they allow them to, like, get away with a little more. That's, that's just common knowledge. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I, no. You're a phony baloney and your nickname should be Tony because I'm not phony for it, bro. Not even a little bit. And now you're mad because a bunch of people of color are coming at you and starting to put two and two together. And you're mad that we're finding out the equations for it. You're like, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I'm not. Uh, no, I just, uh, I'm just. You wouldn't have to scramble in your videos. You wouldn't have to do any of that. You wouldn't have to backtrack anything or walk anything back if you would have listened in the first place. That's wild. That's why you say you're from Ohio, and now you live in Louisiana. Bro, if you're if you're from Ohio, you know, you're, you're like, I, I used to live in Ohio. Yeah. Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and Missouri. And there is nothing but racism from yeah. front to back, back to front. That's and you true. went from Midwest racism to, like, where it originated racism. So you should know better. Right. He's right. Wild, bro. Just wild. So this is all I got from this video. Okay, now let Amid global market volatility, stock market losses and rising inflation have left investors with few options. Ground Floor is here to help. A teacher in South Africa has been suspended for writing racial slurs on the board and apparently it's to educate the kids. So it and live reports Crawford International Pretoria College has suspended a substitute teacher who was caught on video writing derogatory words on a class whiteboard during a lesson. In this video, which has since gone viral, the teacher is seen writing the K word and the N word and their meaning according to her. A number of the students are seen recording her while others object to the contents of the lesson. The school also made a statement and they said, quote, the temporary teacher has been informed not to resume her duties and the school reserves its right regarding further action. Our Teaching commitment to maintaining shit. an environment of respect, Teaching diversity and stuff. inclusion remains steadfast. And quote, that's what the school said. Um, but it's just so bizarre to see the claim that the teacher is making is that she wanted to teach the students. This is a lesson for the kids to tell them what, in her opinion, the N-word means. Like, 
come on now in the first place that's not your place to teach them because that's not your lived experience right. so let's start there and right. secondly you can clearly tell in that video that the kids are not happy with you writing that and there's chaos there's you know arguments and people are even recording you you didn't care you continued writing on that board so what does that really say about what you are trying to do it's just hard to believe that you can be that tone deaf when you using racial slurs actually writing them down when you have kids there sitting watching you the same kids that those words were used to describe them and to demean them and to put them down so acting like the victim after you got suspended doesn't really make sense maybe now you can learn from your mistakes and check yourself and educate yourself and realize that that's not your place to teach the kids about that word and write it down in your classroom so everyone can see the school said she was there for just a while she was a temporary teacher so it was an easy decision for them i guess because they suspended her right away and made a statement they usually take time right we've reported on this kind of stories coming out of south africa but they say they are taking time to investigate and this and that but now it was a swift response which is good but this teacher learned the hard way that you can no longer disrespect people this way apartheid is over i know low key it's still there and the system was designed to benefit certain people now at least she knows that it's modern day and she no longer can decide what she can say to south africans anyways fam let us know down below one thing my prostate cancer hasn't changed this place we've made some great memories here watch what this woman says really gavin Get you thinking. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. I have a very interesting topic that I'm going to be sharing with you today. Um, is actually a statement and a clip that I'm going to be sharing with you where a white woman says that Christianity was the Trojan horse of white supremacy and it was used to justify what they did to others. And that was coming straight from her. This is not something that I'm saying. But um, another thing that I want to talk about in this video is the fact that because people don't understand biblical prophecy, they don't understand what was prophesied a long time ago uh, this is what causes people to get hot and bothered by the things that they see people do and the things that they hear people say. But if you understood things from a spiritual context, you could uh, better decipher and navigate through all of this. Of course, we've all been there before, um, but it is time for us to graduate uh, to a greater understanding so that we can understand things versus simply reacting to things. Of course, there will always be those things that will cause you to feel something on the inside. But when you feel those certain things, again, we need to redirect those feelings so that they don't make us sick on the inside. Redirect those feelings to a, a place of understanding. Understanding from biblical context, things that have been spoken long ago, things have, that have been stated uh, that they will happen if you know what's coming, if you know what's what to expect. And if you know how to navigate through these things or deal with these things on a spiritual level, then you will respond a whole lot differently. And hey, y'all, that's something I'm working on, too. Uh, so when we talk about these things, we want to get to the point where um, it doesn't cause us to um, boil on the inside. OK, but it causes us to reflect and think and say, what is it that I must do? so that I find favor with our creator. That's what we need to do. But um, anyway, I want you all to take a listen to what this woman says. Um, again, she says a whole lot, but one of the statements that jumped out to me more so than anything was when she said that uh, Christianity was that Trojan horse of white supremacy. And this is one thing that a lot of our people who are still stuck in Christianity need to know. Now, listen, when I say stuck in Christianity, I'm talking about the religion, right? I'm not saying that we are supposed to sever our relationship with the Creator, that we need to stop using the Bible or anything like that, because the Bible is our history book, okay? 
And because things have been tampered with, with and moved around and misstated and mistranslated and all of that, we don't need to throw the baby out with the bathwater, okay? So take a listen at this, and I will be right back. White culture, if you could even call it culture, is based in... It was a narrative created by colonizers, like my Portuguese ancestors, in order to justify what they were doing to other people on the continent of Africa and even here in North America. And the narrative was that we white people were better than all other races. And they did so through Christianity. They took the Bible and different scripture verses, twisted it around in order to fit the narrative of colonialism and white supremacy, and also the patriarchy. And the patriarchy is white man in power. White supremacy is white man in power. Colonialism is white man in power. And Christianity, for the most part nowadays, is white man in power. There are historical references and proof where the Catholic Church actually said to enslave an African was to save their soul. The kidnapped and enslaved Africans that were here in North America were preached different scripture verses than were actually in the Bible. And that's why they weren't allowed to read. Because if they could read, then they could see that these scripture verses were incorrect and they couldn't be controlled anymore by this white God. And white people, we didn't identify as white until colonialism. We identified as Portuguese, or Latvian, or German, or Italian, or French. But then colonialism came around, and then all of a sudden we became white, and we were superior, because we were the chosen race by God, and the scripture verses proved it, and we had to go into other people's lands and preach the gospel, when really it was all a ruse. It was all an excuse to go in and, and pillage the land and the people and the cultures. So when I say that white culture is based in race, it's based in race. Christianity was the Trojan horse of white supremacy and colonialism. And Western Christianity, as we know today, is still based within superiority. All Christians think that they're better than everybody else. I grew up in it. I'm very familiar with the culture. And it's part of the problem. There's a reason why most of Trump's supporters are Christians. It's because they don't even realize that the conditioning of colonialism and Christianity and the patriarchy is so deeply embedded within them and their identity that they don't even see the truth. Christianity is based in superiority, in white superiority, in white culture, which is all based in race. Well, it seems like to me the Most High Our Creator is leaning on a lot of people to tell the truth these days. And so a lot of truth is being spoken on things that we already know, of course, right? But right now we are starting to see a lot of people who are just stating things as they are and owning up to things, right? And it is, it's quite refreshing to see this, right? Um, because there is a lot that has taken place in history. And when you have people who kind of uh, shut their eyes and ears to it and don't want to deal with it and, and really want to just kind of sweep it under the rug, it, it, causes, it's, it causes others to be more frustrated because you're saying to yourself, look, this stuff is really happening. And are you going to sit here in front of us, in front of the whole world, and deny that things are happening. Now, as I always state, I like to say this because people need to understand why these things are happening. This is why I talk about the fact that this stuff is prophesied. Because it is not for so-called black people to get angry and, and want to react and respond and do things of that nature. The only reaction and response that we should have, if we know and understand biblical history, is to repent. Because the Most High said he is the one who did this. But he had to stir up nations against us. This is why it says that these other nations would be confederate against us. It was also said that we would be hated of all nations, right? And so in order for the Bible to be truth, in order for prophecy to be fulfilled, this is what must happen. We must see these other nations that are stirred up against us. And we must not 
pretend like we don't know and understand why. And this is why I talk about biblical prophecy often so that people can stop being frustrated at what is happening and find out why it's happening. And no, it does not excuse these other nations for their actions. It doesn't excuse them. But what it does is it shows that the Most High was able to stir up people who already had something in them and ought against us to begin with. But because of our state of sin, when you understand biblical context and biblical prophecy, when the children of Yashrael were living righteous in the Most High's eyes, when they were standing up right before him and not sinning against him, these other nations couldn't put a hand on them, right? But when they sinned, these other nations knew. They said, okay, because you are in sin, we are able to do this, that, and the third. Because the Most High says, I'm going to turn my back on you. When you sin, I turn my back on you. So that is what has happened. And so what we see right now is that a lot of these other nations, they are starting to uh, come forth with the truth. Because we're, we're entering into a time where truth is coming forth like a flood. Our people are waking up and repenting, some of them. The scripture talks about a remnant. But a lot of our people are not repenting. This is why you see so much turmoil in the black community. But when you begin to tie all of the pieces together and put all the pieces of the puzzle together, you will get those that will see and understand. They'll say, look, now I know why these other nations hate us. It was because of our sins. It was because of our transgression against the Most High God. And then some of our people will say, well, you know what, I'm going to repent. Some of our people, they won't repent. They'll get frustrated at the Most High and say, well, I won't serve an Elohim who say he loved me, but does something like this or allow something like this to happen. Okay, well, let me tell you what. Uh, your arms are too short to box with Yah. It doesn't matter how frustrated and upset you get at him because of what he has allowed to come upon us. It doesn't matter. He made a way of escape. He said, if you repent, if your family repents, you can be delivered from these things, but if you do not repent, you can forget it. You can hang it up, right? So this is why we are always saying to our people, look, it is time for us to repent. Stop making excuses to go in the wrong direction and thinking that things are going to change for you. Stop making those excuses. Just repent. Don't get frustrated at what this woman says. She is telling the truth from her perspective, but I'm telling you why people feel the way that they do and why they do the things that they do and this is why we must cry aloud and spare not and lift up our voices like trumpets in zion and show our people their transgressions this, this video i'm the push you need at the moment of truth oh, i'm the chase down block that ended a 52 year drought kings so a University of Wisconsin-Madison student by the name of Audrey Godlewski decides to go on a white supremacist rant and say why she's being recorded with her friends. Now I want you to go ahead and, and, and listen to this. So, you know, I'm so mad. I hope everyone misses me. Because I'm going to go back at home every fucking little girl did me wrong. I literally hate all them. I'm going to make a I'm in the fields all day long until they f***ing die of f***ing thirst and f***ing like they literally gonna, their bodies are gonna dry out because of how much cotton they're picking for me. <laughs> now there's no black person in the room. Black people is, is, is not even entertaining uh, this bottom shelf uh, Becky here. And they're talking about us. I told you, anti-black racism is their culture. You take that away from them, they don't know how to exist. We're nowhere in the room, and they're talking about us. You heard how I talk about picking cotton? I told y'all, when they watch these slave movies, when they watch uh, a thing like 12 Years a Slave, or even if they watch the movies back in the 1950s, they long for those days. They long for the days where they can terrorize and abuse you and get away with it. It, it is talking about picking my cotton. Nobody picks cotton anymore like that. But yeah, that's what's in their mind. Because they demons. You know what I'm saying? So, the students actually came out and protested against it. The students had signed a petition by 66,000 of them and say, hey, she needs to be uh, expelled from this university. She do not need to be here. Then the university comes out 
and, and they're saying that, you know, of course they condemn what she says, but, you know, what she says is, is, is protected by the First Amendment on her personal social media accounts, and even though they disagree with how she feel, you know, they're not going to basically do nothing about it. She can stay at the college. Now, this girl is still a registered nurse's aide with the state, right? So, you have a white supremacist as a nurse's aide. What about the care for black people? This, this is when it becomes dangerous because if this is the way you feel about black people, then what are you going to do to black patients? See, black people, like I said, we have to really go back to how our ancestors were. We need our own hospitals. We do have doctors. We don't have enough of them. We need our own nurses. We need our own practitioners. Because these white supremacists wage war on us every chance they get. They're harming black people every day in these hospitals. You wonder why black folks don't trust medicine? It's because of these white supremacists. Black folks will feel more comfortable if we had doctors that, that of course, look like us. Definitely. And I, these days, you better say possibly the descendants of slaves because... You don't know where sometimes the immigrant coming from. You don't know until you talk to them and, and get their vibe. But this is dangerous. This is real dangerous for any black person in in that state. And this this female running around here talking like this, and even though she made an apology and all of that, it don't matter. Apology don't matter to me. When y'all when y'all say all this white supremacist crap, that don't mean nothing to me. You know what? Don't mean nothing to me and other black people. And that's something you see in your house every day. That's that's normal for you. That's cultural. I'll tell you that's cultural. That's why I tell these brothers. You can't be messing with, with that group of women. Those, because they've been raised to have a hatred for you. And and me and, and black women. Right? Same thing as their men. And now you may not have some of them who talk that way or feel that way, but this is the problem. Somebody in their family do feel that way, even though maybe they don't. And they are not going to turn against their family for you. They're not going to do it. So that's why I've always said to brothers and sisters, that group, particular group of people, we're talking about Caucasians, European people, that's what we talk about. There they cannot be viable options in that area because of how they're raised in the history we have with them. Because eventually, we're going to clash. And we don't need to be clashing with nobody like that. We have some. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, I don't know what this, you know, what's there more to say? But uh, just to prove that what he's talking about, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? He he made a video about it too. He, he oh yeah he made a video about. In fact, it was some. I'm looking at the video, trying to find the video now. Where it was in Florida, I believe. Um, this is crazy, man. That they were discriminating against black people. This warfare is real, bro. This warfare is real. You better watch, <laughs> and they got the medication in the way, and uh, they can use it against you. Um, it's crazy. I can find that video. But isn't that crazy, though? But people, there are people like that, man. That are that are that, are, that racist. Then they try to hide it up. So here it is. You made a video about it. I want to thank you for She's everything you do for our Republican candidates and Republican senators. We couldn't do it without you. Nine black nursing professionals filed a civil lawsuit for unlawful racial discrimination after claiming they endured a hellish 
It said bigoted conditions at an Alabama assisted living facility where they were the victims of several incidents of racial abuse and harassment. Now, last time we were doing you know our news stories on this channel, we noticed in Alabama, Mississippi keep coming up. And like I say, they produce some of the most vile, evil, demonic white supremacists ever in Mississippi and Alabama. I say, according to a lawsuit, they say that was obtained. They say the woman says, they say that they have been subjected to racial, discriminatory, hostile environment that encompasses racial slurs by coworkers, racially uh, teen taunts, and verbal abuse and unequal enforcement at Florala Health and Rehabilitation. So Shakia Thomas, Angelia Williams, Kiara Blue, Kiana Crittenden, Cassandra Westry. Chantel Mays, Melissa Hobdy, Courtney Love, and Michelle Carswell are named as plaintiffs. The suit is filled with a compilation of experiences and interactions these women say they have undergone and say with staff and residents alike, where they were overtly referred to as N-words and slave girls numerous of times. And one of the plaintiffs even overheard a white coworker say these black girls need to service their people like they were the slaves they are. Another white co-worker was heard telling another staff member, you got to be kidding me. I have to work short every night and those MF and N words have three down here. Yeah, they actually said all that. That sounds about right. Because these people are, are just straight demons. They say the suit states that the use of the racial epithets against black personnel is commonplace at the nursing home. As he reportedly a group There's chat no. among the facility's white supervisors and select white staffers that is filled with racist commentary or the black staff members. Say the plaintiffs allege even the residents have made statements that the white supervisors have repeatedly, including, uh, I'm allergic to black people, colored people can't come to my room, and blacks aren't meant to serve. They say one instance reportedly escalated to a physical altercation where a white co-worker uh, pulled Crintendon's hair and called her a horse head. They say a white supervisor also made Hobby continue serving as a caregiver of a white patient who assaulted her with a makeshift knife. Oh, Lord Jesus. He said there was also regular reports of white staffers leaving black residents neglected and bathed and without proper clothing and medication. So Shakia Thomas reported that her white co-workers left a black 105-pound patient naked on the floor for hours. He said when she made a formal complaint, he said no corrective measures were instituted and no investigation was launched and said Thomas's work schedule changed to which impact her ability to take care of her children when they're going to school. So they said the plaintiffs are seeking relief in the form of compensatory and punitive damages, a form of permanent prohibition of discriminatory treatment at Ferrala Health and Rehabilitation, and implementation of policies for equal uh, employment opportunities. So they say the suit says that the black employees occupy the lower paying certified nurse assistant jobs. Cassandra Westry is the only black registered nurse at the facility. They say the other eight plaintiffs are CNAs. They say there are also fewer opportunities for black staffers to work shifts, but they get paid overtime. White staffers frequently exert authority, even though they hold no supervisory role. So they just straight white supremacists in there. Boy, well, y'all about to get paid. Oh, boy. Y'all gonna cash out. So according to census reporter Florala, it's a town in Covington County, Alabama. Say so with a population of nearly 1,800 people, that the town's population is 74 percent white and 24 percent black. So yeah, y'all, that was a straight up white supremacist facility, straight up. But let me tell y'all something. You don't want to be in no town like that. It's 74 percent. Then was on 24 percent black folk. That's not enough of us there. Not enough at all. That's why they act that way. Because one thing I can tell y'all what I've learned about them over the years, they get real bold when they feel like they have more numbers. They get a little bit more humble when there's more numbers of us. And they really get humble when, it's, when we, they're outnumbered. Oh, they, they're very friendly when they're outnumbered. Trust me on that. But, yeah, they, they, about to get, they got to get paid. A federal lawsuits? Yeah. Because you're violating all kind of laws at these facilities. But... As you, as you keep hearing, these people, like I said, they will never change. That's why I'm like, I don't know why y'all would even think these people would change. They're going to be like this to, to the end. You know you should be planning for the future. But savings yeah, accounts suck. And, and investing can be scary. 
I'm about to comment with my next five minutes on this video. Um, you know, it's really sad that even when you come to the later at the end of your life, you gotta deal with something like that. We all gonna go our bodies deteriorate and in the midst of our bodies deteriorating as we age in this world, some of us will end up in a position where somebody have to take care of us. And these people can't even come together without being that evil, racist. I mean, it boggles my mind. Black people, white people are going to have problems when they get older. But they will hold on to their racism till they die. You know what's the sad thing about it? Once they die, they ain't going to see the kingdom. That's really sad to the white people that treat those people like that. To anybody that treat a person like that. While they, was, they, were, in, they, were, they were gravely ill. That's really sad. It's really disgusting. And it's going to cost them in the end. The more races that they, they, they turn off to be, they could turn up, but they're only going to turn the heat on themselves. Because, like I said before, God hears the ancestors of those slaves down south. And, and those white people that keep doing that, they're going to find out that they're, they're, going, they're going to suffer in the end. Not by, by the hands of man, by the elements of nature. They're going, they're going to wish that. You know, it's just something that you got to be an evil person to be that wicked towards another group of people. Even if they take care of you. You got to be an evil, wicked person. That you that you, you can, can stain these people. And they trying to help you sustain life. God has laid on these black women's heart. To do what they can. And they're getting spit on. And talked about. Even some of the patients. That's really sad. And even. It's sad that. People can't even. In the midst of human suffering. They got to be racist. In the midst of human suffering. Watching a human being suffer. In the latter years of their life. And they, and they, and they dog and want people, group people out. Another people because. The, a color of skin. Something that was no fault of their own. They came from a, de a demographic of people. And these people. You know. Been living been th since the four, four, five hundred years. And these same people. Kept this venom. From generation after generation. At black people. And they don't know some of their friends and relatives going to suffer the same fate as they age in this earth. I, you know, what's more to say? And then the woman teaching over in South Africa, something like that. Wow. Just disgusting. And it's not just South Africa, but it's, it's some people in America and Canada and other places. They, it's like if you don't want to be around black people, why do you go someplace where there's black people or other people that, that don't fit your criteria? I never could fig figure this shit out. Why do you live in some places? Like if you're that racist and, and people make you feel that uncomfortable and you're uncomfortable seeing these people, why don't you live in predominantly white areas? Why? Why do you live in, in, in the black area? Especially, particularly here in the United States, there are 50 states that got 6,000 counties, and out of 6,000 counties, put most of them are predominantly white. All across America, you don't have to look at black people. Even in places like Wisconsin to Mississippi, but yet you still racist. Even when you're not around, like he said, you're still racist. You. You got to be caught on video being racist. Who's, who's rent-free and who's mine? Black people don't be thinking about you like that. 
I never could figure that out. Why? Why? Like, you know, if I didn't like a group of people, I ain't going to be around them. If I had that much venom and, venom and disdain for, for a group of people, I wouldn't even be around them. I wouldn't even, they would be in my, 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 my other path. If I, and like I said before, if I was the whitest racist person, I definitely, I'd be finding the most whitest racist county it, it, it can be. And said, so why did you move out here? Because I couldn't stand, I, I don't want to see another person, any color. I don't even want to see them on TV. I don't want to hear my hear the any music. I don't want to see them in sports. I don't want to see them in entertainment. Turn the station. Can't stand looking at them. Why? Because you know what deep down you're jealous and you're envious. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's, that's what it is. Like that don't make no sense. That's like me being jealous and envious at Asian people or Arab people, or whatever. For what? They're here on this planet for a reason. Just like Hispanic people. That don't make no sense. If you don't like the people, then don't take our dollar. Don't take our business. And, we, and then when God prosper us and some get away from you, then, then, then maybe the people who like you will fill you up. But this stuff that you think that you're going back in time, Oh, this place will go to hell before it goes back to that time in early America where you, where you did the black people. God's not going to let that happen. And for the white people who think like that, you will never get that back. You will burn in hell. You will suffer in the worst part of hell. And that's where you're going. So you can take your white supremacy, your white doctrine, your white mindset, and that colonial mindset, and, and it's going straight to hell with you. And this is to the ones who think like that, who said, who, who 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 is embedded in them to have against people that look like myself. You you gonna you gonna suffer the consequences in this earth, and it, it probably won't be by the hands of someone that look opposite of you that look like me. It might be someone that look like you that take you out. It might be elements that take you out. So I, so as an old saying goes, I will watch you by the way I treat people. Because, you know, the world calls it the karma. And it's going to come back around. Look, 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 look at the weather. Look at the elements. I always said this in the last video. You think it's it going to probably hit other people, other, other races, but it's going to hit where you at. So just keep on acting, keep on acting a nut, being racist. It's gonna come back on you. Cause when you come to the end of his life, wait till you meet the one that made all the human race. Wait till you take that venom to your grave, to the ones of Mississippi, Alabama, and other ones across this country. Wait till you meet the one that made all of us. Because you're not going into the kingdom of God. And I don't care if you are a Christian. Because there's no white Christians. Just white Christians. You've been deceived. So you you think you're going to take a colonial mindset like yourself? And you're really persecuting the people you love. You don't see it. 400 years coming back on those white people like what happened in Mississippi and Alabama. They're gonna bear, bear they're gonna bear the punishment. What you used to do is coming back. Did you hear what the lady was saying in that one video? It's your turn now. But it's not gonna think but it's gonna come back who you that's why justice is turning the wheels of justice is turning turning. And every time when you commit an act act like this, it turns against you. You don't get it. The more you act, act up and get entitled, white entitlement, you suck on suffer this. Listen to the ones who got that white entitlement. Don't mean, don't mean that's all white people, okay? But to the ones that do. You're going to suffer what you do. Believe that. What you're doing to my people. It's coming around the corner. Keep being racist. You just only gonna dig a you only dig a ditch for yourself. You'll see. 
you might not like this message, but it's not. It's just the way the way the world is. It's not a threat. It's the way the world is. Come right back around. No hitch. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share, like, and subscribe. And um, to black men, black women, and black ch child, keep your hand up. You're not. You're not a curse. You're a blessing. They, they, right now, they they gonna sub subjugate on their self under the curse the way they treat you. And the ones who God God the Most High don't miss who, who get mistreated. Even someone of the same race. Think about it. All right then. Take care. Be blessed.